fantastic. In fact, uh, it's absolutely as I had it. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. It looks like just about the showroom in Manchester. That, uh, and they're choosing this venue is that uh, I purchased the car on a, on a Saturday afternoon and drove it over here on a Sunday morning. Um, and being obviously a car that was very rare, I think it was one of the first C types in Essex at the time, and it, uh, uh, a lot of people were goggle eyed about it. And I drove up to the uh, starting area with it because they asked me if I'd have a run up the hill to show people the car. And I said, well, why don't I enter it in one of the events of uh, the GT car of 3000? And they said, well, I don't see any reason why not. And um, I entered the car, uh, as a matter of fact, and won the uh, class. I thought it was fantastic. The engine really should be absolutely identical to the specification that Ken raced in 62. We haven't gone for any later parts that you can now um, put on engines that allow you to rev them slightly more. Um, we've kept to the original specification of the mid 60s um, and it should give about 285, 290 brake. It hasn't actually been on a brake course to know exactly um, at the moment. But we had a job to get tyres because uh, you know, in those days you had to buy them from Dunlops mm -hmm. and you used to have a green spot and a yellow spot yeah. and so we thought we'd try and put some greens on the on the front to hold the front yeah. and yellows on the back slightly so it's sort of soft on the front oh. and it worked really? yeah well, you know because we, uh, we were ahead of everybody you know the, the uh, GT, oh. GTs, the four GTs, Aston Martins it was well round when uh, Jackie Oliver drove the car and just left everybody standing. That was in, in the wet. Well, in the wet, that's yeah. why. I mean, you know what happened when I took over. <laughs> we won't talk <laughs> about that. <laughs> but like anything else, if you if you go to drive a car on the limit, whether it's wet or dry, you, well, you've got to expect something to happen, don't you? That's right. <laughs> but it certainly is. You've made a very remarkable job of it. It's really nice to see it like that. Yeah. Many more people didn't take care of these sort of cars and keep them up to scratch. Well, you think it's your seal of approval? It is, sir. Uh, taken a hell of a time to get the uh, original parts as it really was in those days. I mean, even to the bonnet, which uh, wasn't fiberglass. No, no. Uh, they were dangerous, actually. Even some of the unpreferred aluminium parts. Yes. In fact, it was in the weight. So it wasn't all that much, really, but uh, they used to rattle the old fiberglass bonnets oh, yes. and uh, they used to break away from the uh, mountings very often. 
Oh, yes. one flying over the top. Oh, yes, that's true. So, uh, although um, they were a lot cheaper, uh, the aluminium uh, bonnets were, were not uh, safer. As a matter of fact, I made two. I made one for um, Maurice Charles, if you remember him. He oh, raced, yes. and, he, and I went down there as a spare driver to race. Oh, to the mall. And, yes. and uh, I made the bonnet for that. The car's been set up very basically and it now needs to be tested uh, to set up camber and caster angles, different tyres and so forth. And we hope to be at the Donaldson meeting in June uh, for the first race. Yeah, it probably would take you about 10 years. Well, it's 10 years, yes. Yeah, right. And the other thing with it, of course, is that um, to carry on um, racing, which is my ambition to race it this year, you must um, have aluminium panels because oh, yes. they won't allow you to race with the fiberglass well, panels. They, well, they've obviously uh, found out what happened in the past with them. That's yes. Why. yes.